thanks to the organizer for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I've been to Lumini once before, and I think it was in 2006. <laughs> so <laughs> this is kind of uh, coming back after a long time. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a uh, joint work with Antoine uh, Como Lapointe, uh, Chantal David, and Wen Lin Li. Um, um, but I have to warn you that this uh, talk will leave you with more questions and answers, really. Um, okay, so what I'm interested in uh, for this talk um, has to do with ranks of twists of um, elliptic curl functions. And so let me start first by um, recalling uh, what the L function of an elliptic curl over Q uh, looks like, uh, also over uh, function fields. But OK, I'm going to say a few words about rash the rationals. OK, um, so this formula, um, yeah, that we have some version of it already uh, several times. Um, and just to remind people, OK, so uh, this works. OK. Um, so the AP here uh, is, is our friend, the trace of Frobenius, and, uh, which is related to the number of points over, over FQ. Um, FP, sorry, in this case I wrote it with P. Um, and then the L function satisfies, well, a functional equation um, with central point at one, and the vanishing at one, as we know, um, is, um, well, support in principle uh, expected to be related to the rank uh, of the elliptic curve over Q. And this is as predicted by uh, the Birch and Sinerton dyer conjecture. Um, so we, the order of vanishing of the L function at S equals one is going to be the analytic rank. Uh, so we use this uh, to distinguish it from the rank that is supposed to be equal to. Um, now, if we have a Dirichet character, say, over Q, then we can consider the twisted L function. And so this is what it looks like. Um, so basically, I, uh, I put a uh, chi of P everywhere. OK, this is, doesn't work anymore. OK, anyway, I cannot um, point anymore. Um, and as in, in this talk, we are going to be interested in uh, chi, a character of order L prime. Okay. And um, so if we consider the cyclic extension associated to chi, then the Dedekind zeta function, as we know, uh, can be written essentially as a product of um, the zeta function and this uh, digital functions associated to the powers of chi. And this, uh, this uh, this product uh, somehow translates into um, what happens at the level of the L function associated to the elliptic curve. Now, um, for quadratic twist, uh, it's a particular case because then um, this L function can be directly related to the L function of some concrete um, elliptic curve, is a twisted elliptic curve. It is, so here I uh, wrote the equation. And we understand, in principle, uh, the sign of the functional equation, this omega, the sign associated um, with, if we understand the character. And um, there is a famous uh, conjecture by uh, Goldfeld, okay, that conjecture that um, half of the twist uh, should have analytic rank zero, and half of uh, the twist should have analytic rank one. And, um, and here I'm going to mention some previous work uh, in, the, in this slide and the next slides. And I'd like to apologize in advance if, if I forget to mention something. Um, just let me know at the end of the talk. This is the first time I'm talking about this work. Um, so I'm sure there are many typos and, and things and omissions. Um, Heath Brown uh, proved that the positive proportion of the twists have actually analytic rank zero or one under GRH, um, meaning the generalized Riemann hypothesis. Um, there is uh, the exciting result of Mies <laughs> that almost all elliptic curves satisfy uh, Goldfeld conjectures, assuming um, BSD. Um, so that's in that direction. Um, another direction. Uh, that we could uh, look into is the work of uh, Gouvia and Maser. Um, 
that the analytic rank is at least two for at least x to the one half minus epsilon discriminants uh, when you go to the discriminants up to x. Okay, so just to clarify, okay, so this doesn't contradict anything about saying that 100% uh, of the elliptic curves uh, will have rank zero or one, okay, because x to the one half uh, is, 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 it really goes to zero on the proportion of the elliptic curves. But okay, it's infinitely many of them. Um, now moving to uh, higher order, so now order L, um, so uh, like I said, L is, is the prime, and there is the work of uh, David Fernley and Kisilevsky and Mazur and Rubin, uh, who predicted that the vanishing, uh, when, when you take a character of conductor L with L, uh, sorry, of order L, with L greater or equal than three, is actually uh, very rare, okay? So it doesn't happen very often, and this is based on some uh, heuristics on uh, distribution of modular symbols and uh, random matrix theory. Um, there are more concrete, I can be more concrete about this. Uh, for example, Mazur and Rubin, uh, they conjecture that um, in an abelian extension uh, that contains only finitely many subfields of degree two, three, and five over Q, then E of K is uh, finitely generated. Uh, another result, um, sort of in the, in the same uh, kind of spirit, uh, uh, Larsen, Mazur, and Rubin uh, proved that a positive proportion, for a positive proportion of primes, um, there are infinitely many uh, cyclic extensions uh, such that E of K is E of uh, Q. Um, and then there is another result, okay, that I wanted to mention. Um, in, in again, now it's kind of in the opposite direction. Okay, so uh, Fernley, Kisilevsky, and Kuwakta, they prove that um, in the cubic case, if there exists a character such that um, there is some vanishing, then there, is, there are infinitely many, okay. But again, this really doesn't contradict the previous one because the devil is in, you know, the proportion, okay, so infinitely many uh, is not so big, the infinitely many here is not so big compared to other things. Um, going into non abelian extensions, so I, I wanna mention a, a few things, so Lemke, Oliver, and uh, Thorne, um, they, there are infinitely many um, extensions with um, uh, Galois group uh, SD, okay, so the symmetric group, um, such that the, grand, uh, the, the rank actually grows. Um, again, the proportion is, is not, uh, it's not a positive proportion. Uh, for you know, for some uh, curves, the analytic rank of E increases the positive proportion. Um, for the kinetic fields uh, with Galois group is five, um, Kelly hair under certain conditions, infinitely many um, extensions with um, again Galois group is four, such that the ground does not increase. So there are a few results. Now what we are interested in in this talk um, has to do with function fields. Okay, and uh, this slide is um, is a fixed point in most of my talks. <laughs> so I always have this slide. It's kind of a tradition to have it with the smiley faces and the frowny face. Um, okay, so, but I guess in this conference I don't have to talk much about it, okay? But it's just, just as a comment, function fields are nice. Um, we want to study things on function fields. The Riemann hypothesis is true, um, et cetera. Okay, okay, so first of all, let's talk a bit about Dirichlet characters and Dirichlet L functions, okay? So if k is a Dirichlet character of order L, um, on now we're working on FQT. Say my conductor is, I'm gonna call it FK, okay? Then the, um, the um, Dirichlet L function is defined as, okay, we can think of it as a product over the piece of one minus k. Okay, so and here let me stress the differences between what I just was talking before and what we have now. 
Um, so first of all, I'm going to take the product over the prime. So what does it mean? That means um, essentially for us, it's going to mean the monic irreducible polynomials and the prime at infinity. And um, another thing that is different here than before has to do with the variables. So I'm going to take u equals q to the minuses. And perhaps that I'm going to write so that people keep it in mind. Um, and so there will be um, this coming back and forth between S and U. Um, now, uh, by the work of Vail, actually, we know that this LKU is a polynomial of degree, degree of the conductor plus delta minus two. And I explained, OK, so the delta has to do with the factor at infinity. Um, this has, this you can argue that this is, has to do with the convention that we are taking the conductor really as a polynomial in FQT, and so when we do that, we don't, we are not really taking into account what happens at infinity, and there is certainly something that happens at infinity because that factor is inside the L function, okay, and so what what could happen at infinity is that um, the character could be could ramify or not. And uh, so the, the infi infinity could be involved in the conductor. And, uh, and so basically, a way to describe what this delta is, uh, we can say that delta is 0 if uh, chi is even. So chi even means that um, when you look at chi, so having a character or a, um, defined or on FQT, in particular, gives you something over FQ. And if it is even, it's going to be trivial on FQ. Okay, and odd is when it's not trivial on FQ. And, uh, and basically, uh, what's happening here is that when the, charac the character is odd, when um, essentially infinity is involved in the conductor. Um, okay, so that's, that's this distinction. And okay, maybe I didn't emphasize this, but we have a functional equation. Okay, so again, it's a sign uh, given by a Gauss sum. And Everything is kind of a standard. Now, the vanishing, OK, so first we'll talk about the vanishing of these Dirichetel functions. And um, OK, so what do we look at? OK, so the function equation um, goes between s and 1 minus s. So the question is what happens at 1 half. So s equals 1 half is the same as u equals q to the minus 1 half. Um, so we have that. And over the rationals, Chola conjecture, OK, in principle for quadratic characters, that um, they shouldn't be any vanishing. OK, so there's no reason for it to be vanishing, um, so they shouldn't be. Um, now, um, a few years ago, uh, Wan Lin Li proved this amazing result, where she actually found vanishing um, for digital functions um, on function fields. And, um, and basically, here is a summary of her result and then some uh, newer result that she did in collaboration with uh, Donny Pudi. Um, basically, OK, so let me summarize. OK, so there is some vanishing. Is some, the, all the results are like q to some power. OK, this power is if you're looking at all the characters whose conductor has degree bounded by n. OK, so the vanishing will happen um, in a number of characters that is about q to the n over some number that is 3, 2, OK, 2 thirds, et cetera. So smaller than n. So the exponent is smaller than n. So again, this doesn't contradict 100% vanishing. You can still say um, non-vanishing. You can still. Um, maybe expect that it's a 100% non-vanishing, but um, there are infinitely many non-trivial uh, vanishing. OK, um, and so basically the first two items have to do with quadratic characters. I put a square instead of the word quadratic, just so I have an excuse to use a little cube after. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> to say, I have a cube there. OK, so the other, the cube corresponds to cubic characters. And then, uh, but they also prove, the, so this 
um, the last two lines uh, have to do with the work with Dune and Pudi, the work more recent, where they have, um, uh, yes, banishing for characters of uh, higher order. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's talk about elliptic curves again. Okay. Um, okay, so if I have an elliptic curve on uh, this function field, what does it mean? Okay, so I have an equation like the usual, but now my coefficients. Uh, say they are polynomials in FQT, okay, or not. Okay, so in principle they are polynomials in FQT, well, okay, that's true, they are polynomials in FQP, but they could be constant, okay, they could be just elements in FQ. And this is going to be some distinction that is going to play a role in what I'm going to say next, okay? so. What I wrote is true, they are polynomials in FQT, but we are going to be also particularly interested in the case where A and B are just in FQ. Okay, so here how do we build the L function? Okay, so it's, it's the same gymnastics as before. So if we have, we take a prime, uh, including the prime and infinity, then if we, if we take the, um, the residue field by P, so this is going to be um, isomorphic to f, f uh, q to the degree p for the prime infinity, the degree is one. And then, uh, and then when you have good reduction, you can do the same, uh, the same story, count the number of points that you have on the elliptic curve on, on my um, um, uh, residue field by p and uh, build the, uh, yeah, they build the build function as always, and then well, look at the case with bad reduction, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, so basically, then you put together these factors, okay, and uh, in the same way that we build the L functions in the rational case, and then uh, by the work of Bale again, if E is a non-constant, okay, non-constant means when A and B are honest polynomials and not just constant elements in FQ, um, then, uh, then uh, this L function is a polynomial of degree, n um, degree of n minus four, where n is a conductor of the elliptic curve. And we also have, uh, of course, the Riemann hypothesis, uh, meaning that uh, we're going to have the, my factors are going to be you can normalize in as QU times some element of um, absolute value one, um, and we also have a functional equation, and uh, as one would expect. Um, so this again relating S with two minus S, or Q, uh, sorry, U with one over Q square U, okay, with this normalization. Now, if we want to consider the twist, okay, we twist in the same way as we did before, okay, so we add the Dirichlet character. Now, uh, for the purpose of this discussion, we are going to consider the case where um, the bad reduction is disjoint, okay, so the, the conductor of the character is going to be co-prime to the conductor of elliptic curve in all the sense, meaning also we should take into account the prime at infinity. I didn't write it uh, very carefully there, but um, we don't want infinity to be um, a bad reduction for the elliptic curve if we are working with an odd character. Um, and then, and then there is a functional equation uh, and uh, some understanding what the sign should be. Uh, so everything is good. And we also have the typical uh, product. Okay, so if we consider um, K is the cyclic extension of order L um, associated to the character chi, then the L function of the elliptic curve associated um, over k, sorry, is going to be this product of L function um, of E times uh, this uh, twisted, this dirichlet L function. Um, okay, so what's more or less summarizing what we have? Okay, so if we have a chi uh, defined on FQT, um, 
can be associated to some abelian extension k over uh, extension of FQT, and this can be associated to some curve, okay, in the sense that it's going to be the function field of the curve. Um, so, for example, to, to have something concrete in mind, if we have, uh, say, a hyperelliptic curve, y squared equals ft, um, my extension is going to be, you know, adding the square root of ft, more or less, okay? Uh, so, that this is what we have in mind, to have something very concrete. Um, and if we're talking about, um, say, a character of order L, well, we, we can do the same game. We have to be careful, though, um, um, here when we take L roots, so we're going to go to come back to this later, um, but say Q congruent to one mod L for the moment. Um, yeah, and then we can think of the extension as uh, y to the L equals f of t, I mean as the curve as, as uh, y to the L equals f of t, and you are adding the L root of f. Um, and so then, in this context, okay, if you're looking just at the Dirichi character, um, again, you can think of um, what happens to the L function associated to the curve that is associated to the extension associated to the Dirichi character, and we have that product. Now, um, now, how can we put these things together? Okay, so we have C and L cyclic cover. Um, we have this L function, okay, and then we have the elliptic curve, okay. And um, we are going to consider now the case where A and B are constants, meaning that they are elements in FQ. But, okay, the thing is that what we want to do eventually is think of this constant curve as a curve on FQT, okay. Um, so we're going to think of this as a curve in FQT, and then, um, there is a theorem of Milne that says exactly what the L function is in this case. Okay, so the L function of this curve that we think of it as a curve in FQT, um, so we call it constant, uh, constant curve, um, sorry, con yeah, constant elliptic curve. Okay, it's going to be given by, you know, I'm gonna, just a minute, I think I have a pointer that um, actually works. Okay, so this is the only slide where the colors are maybe a bit relevant, otherwise it's just me having fun, but, um, so basically, um, if the L function associated to my, like the constant elliptic curve has um, eigenvalues um, alpha one and alpha two, okay, so basically, we are, okay, so the, the alphas are the same, okay, and the betas are the same. So this is telling you exactly the shape of the L function, okay. Um, and why is this interesting? Well, mm, the question we have is when we have vanishing, okay? And so we can play with this to predict the vanishing. Um, Basically, we have this. So, if we have an elliptic curve of this type, okay, a constant elliptic curve, then um, <coughs> the vanishing of the L function associated to this constant elliptic curve will come from what happens when you evaluate the um, the, eigen, the Frobenius eigenvalues associated um, to the base elliptic curve with the L function associated to the Dirichet character, okay? So essentially that. Um, it, this is not really hard to see. Basically, what we care about is that having zero here, um, when you, okay, so you, you want to evaluate it in um, square root of Q, right? And so basically, uh, sorry, one over, um, one over Q, okay? And so basically what we have to have is that um, here, alpha, beta, the product should be Q, okay? 
And so what this is going to, so the alphas and the betas have absolute value square root of q, okay? So it's all about the angle of alpha and beta. And what you need is alpha to be conjugate, some alpha to be conjugate to some beta, but they already are in conjugate pairs. So at the end of the day, basically, the, uh, some, some beta should be some alpha. That's what we are saying in this equation. Okay, okay, so this is, um, so in, in this sense we understand what's happening. Okay, so the vanishing of the um, twisted elliptic, um, uh, twisted uh, L function of the elliptic curve when uh, u is equal to q inverse reduces to the vanishing of the L function associated to the character at one of the um, eigenvalues, okay? Okay, so what our goal was to um, generalize the results of Lee and Donipudi Lee, okay? I remind you, they work on um, Dirichlet L functions, and what we want is to extend this to elliptic curves, and also to extend this beyond the case Q congruent to one model. So something that I didn't discuss much in detail, but it was hidden everywhere. Um, in, in, in the results, they are considering Q congruent to one model. And the reason for that is that it's easier to understand what's happening with the extensions. There, you have the L roots of unity are on the base field. And, um, yeah, so it's easier to understand the extensions, it's easier to understand the characters, etc. So we wanted to extend that. And so what we prove is the following. So if there is an L cyclic cover um, with certain degree of the conductor such that the L function associated to this cover evaluated at U0 is zero, then um, Yes, where u0 is some vague number, okay? So typically you can think of um, yeah, q to the um, one half, but it's going to uh, minus one half, but um, yeah, but it's going to be more general than that because we want to play with the evaluation of this alpha inverse that I have in the previous slide, okay? Then there is a proportion of vanishing, okay? And my proportion of vanishing is similar to what we have before. So it's q to the 2n over d0, okay? And n is the bound for the degree of the conductor, okay? So it's very similar to what we had before. Okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing is apply this to elliptic curves. Um, okay, so if you have an, a constant elliptic curve, then if there is a character, um, such that there is a vanishing of the twisted L function of that elliptic curve by that particular uh, character, then we get infinitely many um, a, a characters for such that there is vanishing there, okay? And the proportion is the same. And really, this result is a corollary of the discussion that we just had mixed with um, this theorem. So, like I said, I'm gonna repeat this. So I have an arbitrary u0 here that is a vein number because of the previous result, okay? Because of that. Because I want to evaluate in some, uh, in some alpha one inverse, not just any, um, not just one half. Okay. And, and this is coming back to uh, Santiago's talk, I guess. <laughs> so, so the idea of how to produce this, um, this original um, character comes from uh, the Tejonda theory, okay? So we, we saw this earlier um, this afternoon, okay? So we have uh, the consciousy classes of Cubay numbers are in correspondence with isogeny classes of simple abelian varieties. And, we also saw this uh, previously, so we, I mean, we saw the quality, I guess. But um, so if we have a sub, 
a sub uh, abelian variety, a sub variety, then um, this is going to work if and only if the, uh, the characteristic polynomial of the Frobenius device. And, uh, and so basically what um, Lee does um, in her original work, uh, she, she plays with this um, to build, okay, so starting from a cubic number, um, you can look at um, the abelian variety associate that has uh, corresponding to this construction with the Frobenius, uh, so that the, uh, the Bay number is an eigenvalue of the Frobenius, and then, um, uh, from there to look for a curve such as the Jacobian, the, the abelian variety that you got is a sub-variety of the Jacobian, and then you are reduced to a curve, and then once you have the curve, um, as long as you can build an infinite family of curves, uh, actually more than infinite, right? a, a, a good proportion, um, such that there are non there are um, dominant mass from this C to the, the original curve, and then you will get um, that um, the L function of your C0, your, the, the curve that you build originally, divides the other L function. And so if you have zero in the original case, then you have zero for all your infinitely, infinite uh, curves. Now, um, okay, so this, like I said, it was done before in the, in the context of uh, what is called uh, Kummer cyclic cover. So this is when Q congruent to one mod L. And so the typical um, story is that you have an affine model uh, for your curve y to the L equals f, okay? And f is going to be a polynomial that is, um, so this f1, f2, f L minus one are all square free. So you kind of, uh, put together things in terms of um, factors that appear once, twice, etc., up to L minus one. And the conductor is going to be just the square free product, uh, okay? So the, the content free, uh, square free that you can get from there, so just the product. Um, and by the way, I didn't go into detail, but uh, this, this total degree is going to be, uh, is essentially up to constant, essentially the genus of uh, the extension. Now, okay, I'm confusing my clickers now. Okay, so, okay, so what's the great idea uh, that Wan Lin had? She um, takes a polynomial in FQT and replaces T by this polynomial, okay? And so you get a new curve here, okay? And there is clearly a map from your new curve to the original curve, but, and as long as this product is a square free, then you're good, okay? Now, because I mean, if there is a square, then you kind of lose track of where you are overcounting, you know, things several times, et cetera, et cetera. So you want this to be square free. So that's the part that, um, uh, that is tricky here. And, um, okay, so here's the map. I, um, so, like I said, this is the dominant map going from C to C0, okay? And so you have to count when you have a square free values um, when you do this evaluation, this replacement of T by HT. And for that, um, she uses a sieving um, uh, due to Punen, okay, that basically answers the question, okay, so if we have a polynomial um, in M variables with coefficients in FQT, okay, what's the proportion of uh, okay, so that, that is a square free, um, and then what's the proportion of values that takes that are square free, essentially? So, so basically you take, um, you take values in here, uh, you specialize the xi in values, and then you want to know um, what's the proportion of square free over everything, okay? So you are interested in this quotient. And if you think about it, um, the result is extremely natural, okay? So basically what you do is um, you take the probability that the number is divisible by square, okay? So the number of x in the quotient of FQT by P square going over P prime in FQT, okay? Um, that satisfy F0 equals zero in the quotient. Oh, this A should be FQT, sorry. I, 
uh, notation change. And so this CP is how essentially is codifying the probability that you are divisible by p squared. Um, and so it's not surprising that the probability that is square free is the product of one minus all these probabilities. Um, okay. So for so all of that can translate in the in the Kummer case for our um, in our context. But then um, if we look in the more general case of L cyclic covers that not necessarily Kummer, so not necessarily Q congruent to one mod L. Um, then we have to take into account the order, the multiplicative order of Q modulo L. Okay, so if Q is not one mod L, so Q to some power will be one mod L. Okay, and so we call that NQ. And then um, what happens is that now the conductor of the character, the primes dividing the conductor of the, prime, uh, of the character, they can only have degree divisible by NQ. Okay, um, uh, so put it in other words. The primes dividing the conductor are the primes that split completely in um, NQN, Q to the N, um, Q to the NQ. Okay. Um, okay. Um, and so there is work of uh, Barry Soroker and Meissner who actually describe what these covers should be. Um, so it's quite. Um, involved and there is a lot of index tracking there. Um, but basically the idea is to work on the conductor and look at what happens in the extension is Q to the NQ. And, uh, and, then, and then play with that. And you can actually finally write an equation that uh, makes sense over FQT. Okay? So this is an equation like the equation that we had before, Y to the L equals F, okay? but in this context. I'm not going to explain what these things are, but let me just say this is a root of unity. But I mean, this is some symmetric F that you build out of your original F. And so, for example, here is a particular case uh, to, to understand this formula better. So, if L equals 3 and Q equals 2 mod 3, okay, so in this case, and Q is 2, okay, so it has order 2, um, then your cover will look like this, okay. So, this in principle is written. In the extension, but it's not. I mean, this is um, Galois invariant, so it's actually on, on the on the ground. On the ground. Okay. Um, okay. So so like combining all these elements, we can prove this vanishing. Okay. Um, let me just comment a bit. Uh, the two. Yeah, this two here. Actually, we have the two in all the results. I mean, it's not new uh, for this result. Um, that actually comes from uh, when you apply Punen sieve. I mean, uh, you take u over, you take your h. It's a rational function, but you can think of it as when you homogenize, it's a function with two coordinates. So that's basically so the Punen sieve is applied with m equals two. Um, okay. This doesn't seem to move. Oh. Okay. Now, the big question here is how you produce a character so that you have vanishing to begin with, okay? Because you cannot have all of this is okay, so if you give me a character, you have vanishing, and then I can build the whole story, right? But if I don't have, <laughs> you know, the n equals one point in my induction, then. Um, everything falls apart, right? Um, well, that's the part that is complicated. That's why I say I will leave you with questions. Um, okay, so we did, uh, by the way, this work we, we also presented in ANTS. Um, so we did a lot of numerical experimentation for this. And um, so one thing that we noticed, okay, and so this is like, we noticed. OK? Um, if we have a prime uh, that is congruent to minus 1 mod L, so NQ equals 2, OK? So order 2. Um, then it seems that the theorem applies for any super singular curve. Um, so basically, what I'm saying is that you can build, here's an example. OK. So 
so you can always find um, an L, uh, you can always find a cover such that the L function um, will have the shape 1 plus p u squared to some power. And basically, um, and so for whatever p you want. And that's the part that is surprising. I mean, this we found uh, experimentally. Um, we cannot prove it, okay? But then what it means is that you can take the super singular curves that have um, essentially these L functions and um, yeah, and get and, and do the gymnastics in this case. Um, so here I have some examples. Okay, so this example is a seven seven cycle cover, okay, over F thirteen. Um, uh, here are other uh, things. So with um, L different values of L. Okay, so this is the one I said was seven. This 13, 17, 19, 31, 37. This is for some values of p. We didn't do general q. We just look at p because it's simpler. Uh, but but of course one could do that. Okay, so there are many parameters that one can choose. Okay, so in this case all the m p's are two and. And this zero, sorry, this comes from the way we presented things in the paper. All we are saying is that the AP is zero here, which is because we're looking for one plus P U squared. Um, of course, all of this was for constant elliptic curves. What happens to non-constant elliptic curves? Okay, um, the method that we have to obtain results for constant elliptic curves doesn't apply to non-constant elliptic curves. Because when you replace this t by ht that we did while there, your elliptic curve changes, right? I mean, if your you know if your coefficients depend on t, the elliptic curve changes. So all this reasoning cannot be applied. Um, so in this case, we don't know what to do. Um, but we did some uh, experiments again, and uh, what it looks is again the vanishing is uh, okay, not again. Let me start the sentence again. Okay. So what we saw in the experiment is that the vanishing seems very real. Okay. So in in the same lines as the conjectures that were done over Q, okay, it looks like um, maybe there is no vanishing. Um, so this is different from the constant elliptic curve where we can uh, produce infinitely many cases. Okay. So here we have some tables. Okay, so this is with the Legendre curve. Okay, um, so we're looking at cubic characters, or I should have put the Q, the Q here instead of a f uh, three. Um, okay, prime p five seven MP. Okay, so MP two MP is equal one, um, various degree of conductor, and then the whole point here is that the first column is when you get rank zero, the second rank one, rank two. Okay, so it gets sparse. Um, here's twist of order five. Um, so the same story is even worse. So we didn't find anything with rank two, uh, very few with rank one. Okay, and if we got by higher order, um, then um, as we, we found not vanishing. Um, we look at another curve. Um, we chose this curve um, based on uh, has good reduction at infinity, so the Legendre curve doesn't have good reduction infinity. So we look at that too, and again here um, we have similar results. Okay, there are more tables in the paper, um, but I mean the whole point is the same. Okay, so uh, these columns, uh, if you advance in the rank, they become smaller. Um, the two here is highlighted only to say, wow, there are two that have rank three, but <laughs> nothing special about it. Okay. Um, yeah, so food for thought, okay. Basically, a summary of what we found, okay. Um, so, what we have is that when um, P is congruent to minus one mod um, L, and uh, we take super singular, it looks like we can always find. Uh, some character of order L such that the twisted L function vanishes at Q inverse. So that's for the constant elliptic curve. And then, wrong button, okay. For non constant elliptic curve, um, what it looks is like, 
I don't know, it looks like we don't have any vanishing, so this question that we wrote here is kind of like, maybe we hope that the answer is no, but we don't know. So the question is what happens, if there is vanishing, can we build infinitely many? We don't know. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention.